In today's video, we will be talking about the operational amplifiers, their basic parameters, and the internal circuitry of op amps. We will start by talking about op amps, building blocks, their loop configuration, why we use them in feedback, and in what forms of feedback. After that, we will cover some of the op amp parameters, such as offsets, slew rate, CMRR, and CMVR. Finally, we will go over the internal circuitry of an op amp. We will cover a very general and basic op amp. In this section, we will talk about the different stages of an op amp. So what is an op amp? Op amps are fairly cheap and widely available from many different vendors. They're used in many different applications and they're basically amplifiers which should have the following characteristics. They have very large open loop gain, differential input stage, and they use feedback to establish and control the relationship between the output and input signals. Op amps can perform many different operations. These operations include addition, subtraction, multiplication, integration, and etc. They are also amplifiers, and amplifiers can perform buffering or they can amplify DC and AC signals. Op amps are used in many different applications. These applications include filters, sensors, sample and hold, circuits, instrumentation amplifiers, and many other applications which we have not included in this slide. Operational amplifiers in general have five pins. Two of those are inputs, two of the pins are supply pins, and finally there is an output pin. Some op amps may have more pins for external compensation. Some op amps have shutdown pins and some may have a differential output stage. We're not going to cover those since this presentation is intended to cover basics of op amps. Op amps must have a very high input impedance, very high open loop gain, and very low output impedance. It's next to impossible to achieve all these three in one single stage. This is why op amps generally have three different stages. The first stage of the op amp is a differential amplifier. The second stage is the gain stage and finally the third stage is the output stage of the operational amplifier. Here you can see the block diagram of simple and general purpose amplifier with three stages shown. The first stage, or the differential input stage of the amplifier, must have very high input impedance. This will cause the op amp to draw very negligible amounts of input current. The very small input current enables the user to utilize the ideal op amp equations for circuit analysis purposes. This stage also provides the DC gain of the amplifier. The next stage of the op amp is the voltage gain stage. The gain stage is mainly responsible for gaining up the input signal and sending it to the output stage. It's worth mentioning that there are many different op amp designs and some of them may have more or less than the classical three stages that we are covering. We also see that the op amp must have a very low output impedance. This minimizes the loading of the output stage of the op amp. The output stage delivers current to the op amp's load and it may or may not have short circuit protection. As we've already mentioned, op amps have two input pins. One is non-inverting or the positive pin and the other input is inverting or the negative pin. In general, op amps can be set up in three different input modes. These three are differential input mode, inverting input mode, and non-inverting input mode. In the differential input mode, the signal 
is applied to both the input terminals. These signals have to be out of phase and the output is going to be completely in phase with the non-inverting signal. In case the signals that are applied to both the inputs are in phase, there should be no output and that input signal is referred to as the common mode signal. It is worth mentioning that we will exchange between the terms output is grounded or output is sitting at mid supply or output is zero and that's all because we are assuming that we have a dual supply voltage. So basically, we have a negative voltage and a positive voltage on the supply ends of the op amp. Under those conditions, all these three terms mean the same thing. And throughout the presentation, we will exchange between the three. In the inverting mode, the non-inverting input of the amplifier is grounded or it is connected to the mid-supply. Input signal is applied to the negative input and the output signal is completely out of phase with the input signal. In the non-inverting input mode, the signal is applied to the positive input of the amplifier while the negative input of the amplifier is grounded. Output signal under these conditions is going to be completely in phase with the input signal. Before going over the next slide, please note that operational amplifiers are not used in open loop configuration. In open loop, amplifiers have very high gain. However, the noise in all the other unwanted signals is gained up by the same factor as the so-called wanted signals. The open loop configuration has very high sensitivity and its main use in comparators which are not op amps. Closed loop reduces the gain of the amplifier. However, it adds stability and op amps are used in closed loop configurations. In closed loop configuration, part of the output signal is applied back into the inverting input of the amplifier. This creates negative feedback, which is generally the type of feedback that's used in op amp. Positive feedback is mainly used in oscillators. In op amps, the feedback signal is always opposing the effect of the input signal. Remember that we are using negative feedback. Negative feedback is used in both inverting and non-inverting configurations of operational amplifiers. The main reasons we use negative feedback are listed in this slide. Since the relationship between the input and the output signals is mostly dependent on external components such as resistors, the circuit properties are easier to predict. Also, they will have lower dependency on the internal circuitry of amplifiers and hence, it is easier to overcome non-linearity and distortion in our setup. In inverting closed-loop configuration, a resistor is used to feedback part of the output signal back into the inverting input of the amplifier. As we've already mentioned, virtually no current flows into the amplifier's input. In this configuration, the positive input is grounded. We will show that the circuit characteristics are determined by values of feedback resistor and gain resistor. Since no current is flowing into the input pin of the amplifier, all current that's coming back from the feedback path is going to go through the gain resistor. So basically, the input current and the feedback current are going to be equal. Since the non-inverting pin is grounded, the inverting pin is going to be sitting at virtual ground. You can see that the feedback current is equal to negative V out over RF. The negative sign indicates that the output signal is completely out of phase with the input signal. The input current is V in 
over RG. Now, if we set these two currents equal, we find the gain relationship of the operational amplifier is V out over V in equals negative RF over RG. This is referred to as the operational amplifier's closed loop gain. As mentioned before, the negative sign indicates that the input and the output signal are completely out of phase with each other. In this slide, we're going to go over a very simple numerical example. An input signal with a peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of 100 millivolts is applied to the inverting input of the op amp and values of RG and RF are given. RG is 1 kilo ohms and RF is 9 kilo ohms. We can utilize the equations from the previous slide and find out that I in the feedback current are going to be equal to 0 0.1 milliampere. Finally, the closed loop gain is equal to the ratio of the feedback resistor to the gain resistor, or 9. This indicates that the amplitude of the output is going to be 9 times higher than, the, than that of the input signal, and hence, the output signal is 900 millivolts peak-to-peak. -peak. Also note that since we are talking about the peak-to-peak -peak values, the minus sign of the inverting amplifier is not shown. However, the output signal at any point is completely out of phase with the input signal. In the non-inverting closed-loop configuration, Again, a feedback resistor is used to feedback part of the output signal back into the inverting input. The input signal is applied to the non-inverting input of the amplifier, but since the feedback path is around the inverting input pin, please note that we will still have negative feedback. Here again, you can see that the feedback current is equal to the input current. Also, the voltage on the inverting input is equal to that on the non-inverting input pin. So we can write the equation for the input signal and feedback current. Input current is going to be equal to the input voltage over the gain resistor, and the output current is equal to the output voltage minus the input voltage divided by the feedback resistor. Setting these two equal and performing simple mathematical operations, we will see that the output voltage to the input voltage ratio, or the op amp's closed loop gain for the non-inverting configuration, is equal to 1 plus the ratio of the feedback resistor to the gain resistor. We are going to work on a numerical example for this case. We are going to input a 100 millivolt peak-to-peak -peak signal on the non-inverting input of the op amp. We are going to use the same resistor and feedback resistor as in the inverting case, 1 kilo ohms and 9 kilo ohms. Here, the ratio of the two resistors is 9 but we have a factor of 1 added. So the output voltage amplitude is going to be 10 times larger than the input voltage amplitude, and the two signals are going to be completely in phase. The output signal is 1 volt peak to peak. Bandwidth is a very important parameter of op amps. Frequency bandwidth is measured at the point where the op amp gain falls to 0 0.707 or 1 over square root of 2 of its maximum value. This point is usually referred to as the negative 3 dB point of the amplifier, and that indicates that the gain at that point has dropped by 3 dB from its maximum value. 
The negative 3 dB points at some different cases are shown here. The open loop configuration is going to have a higher DC gain. However, as we can see from the figure, this configuration is extremely bandwidth limited. That means the gain starts rolling off at only 1 hertz, or that the negative 3 dB frequency is only a few hertz. In closed loop configuration, the DC gain of the amplifier or the gain of the amplifier at zero frequency is reduced. However, the op amp bandwidth is much wider and basically that means the frequency at which the op amp starts rolling off has increased. Remember that this is the negative 3 dB point. The frequency at which the op amp gain is only 1 or at 0 dB is called the unity gain frequency. A very interesting relationship holds between the frequency and the bandwidth of op amps, and that's the gain bandwidth product. The gain of the op amp at any given point multiplied by its negative 3 dB bandwidth is going to give us the unity gain frequency, and this known as gain bandwidth product. The gain bandwidth product is used to determine op amps bandwidth in a certain application. Gain bandwidth is specified in the data sheet or a user usually sets up the gain and this way the user can actually find out the bandwidth of the circuit. In the next part of this presentation, we'll be talking about some of the basic operational amplifier parameters.